do a panoramic view so they can see all their classmates. Everybody say hi. Hi. Okay, so today we're going to talk about how the church got started. Now, who would like to read page 69? Elaine. Yes, please. Hold on for St. Luke. Now, the apostles are locked in a room. Why? The 12 apostles are away from everybody. They're locked in a room. What were they so afraid of? Oh, something bad was going to happen. From whom? Who were they afraid was going to get them or, and what was going to happen? The Romans were going to kill them. Kill them. Why? Because Alex? They were followers of Jesus. Right. They didn't want to die the way that Jesus died. So they're locked in this room. All of a sudden... Jesus, this great wind comes in. Because remember, Jesus died, rose, and then 40 days later, he went up to heaven. Ten days after that, he sent down the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit comes in. Wind and fire. What do they think? What if we were sitting in here and the door's locked and all of a sudden, this huge wind and fire came in here? Grace? They were probably like, they were probably like uh, very scared. Absolutely. But Jesus had told them that he was going to do this. He was going to send someone to help them. Why didn't they believe him? Because, um, like, they thought he was just going to die. Right. They thought he went back up to heaven and they never see him again. Alex? Okay. They didn't believe him about a lot of things. Remember, they didn't believe he'd rise from the dead. They just didn't think that was possible. So they had a hard time with this. So the Holy Spirit comes in. They can all start speaking these languages that they never spoke before. So it would be like if we could speak. Everybody in here spoke a different language fluently and could go out and talk to the people that way. All right? They went out in Jerusalem, which was kind of like New York City. There were people from all over the world. And everybody was listening in languages that they could understand. Keep reading. Alex. Before the day of Pentecost had come, they, they were all together in one place. And suddenly a sound came from heaven like the rush of a mighty wind. It filled all the house, all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared to them utterance so that they the holy spirit gave them the power to speak to everybody so that everybody could be reached and learn about jesus um keep reading grace Andrea. the, holy, the holy spirit transformed the apostles until they had been afraid to speak So, Feast of Pentecost is the birthday of the church. It's when it started. It's kind of like they were filled, they were very, um, I don't want to say comfortable. They're confident in talking about Jesus. Okay? It's kind of, do you guys remember being sixth graders on the first day of middle school? No. How did you feel last year? Nervous. Nervous, scared. You're like excited. Okay? This year, you're old hats. You feel a lot more confident, right? Yeah. Okay? So that's kind of like the apostles. They went from being very afraid to being killed like Jesus because they were his followers to being very confident once the Holy Spirit came down and allowed them the ability to communicate with people of all languages. Andrew, keep reading. The church spread throughout the world. After a while, the twelve apostles divided up the various parts of the known world among themselves. They went out to all the nations preaching the gospel, baptizing new Christians, or, or ordaining new bishops and priests celebrating Holy Mass, and starting co communities of believers wherever they went. Where did they have Mass before this? Grace? In their houses. In their houses, because they were scared. Now, all of a sudden, they can be out in public, and they're ordaining bishops. The other class asked a good question. 
Peter was the first pope, then how did they get the next pope? If it was just the apostles. Alex? Right, because it just says right here. They, uh, where's the bishops? What did they make? They made bishops. Ordaining right, ordaining new bishops and priests. So those people all got together and voted for the popes after Peter. How did Peter die? You should know this. We just had this last week. How did he die? LJ. Crucified upside down. Why? Because he didn't want to die like Jesus did. Right. He felt he couldn't die like Jesus did. He wasn't worthy of that. How did Andrew die? Peter's brother. He died on an X-shaped cross. X-shaped, X-shaped cross. Same thing. He didn't feel worthy to die the way Jesus did. So all of the apostles were martyred for their faith. They were killed for their faith, except whom? Oh. Who was the one who died of old age? Paul? Nope. Paul wasn't an apostle. Paul came along later. Paul was a bad guy. Max. Judas? No. I mean, Judas? Nope. Good guess. Starts with the same letter. John? John. He lived to be a hundred. Okay? Now, we've talked about this before. Why did Jesus... Somebody in the other class said, why did the apostles listen to Peter? It would be like if I said, I'm leaving, and not say who's in charge. I just left. What would you guys do? How would you figure out who was going to be kind of be in charge? Grace? Uh, argue and then elect, okay? <laughs> but Jesus was really smart. How did he let everybody know that Peter was going to be the one in charge when he was gone? He gave Peter the, key, the keys to heaven. Right, in front of everybody. And he said, you are the rock on which I will build my church. If I said, Marcella's in charge, and then I stepped out of the room, there would be no question, because I said, this is who's in charge. But if I leave and Marcella says I'm in charge, half of you wouldn't listen to her, would you? No. no. <laughs> you should. So, Peter, Jesus made sure that all the apostles knew he was in charge because Jesus said it in front of him. Okay, I digress. Keep reading. Peter the Pope went to Rome, and this day his successors still live and serve there. We cannot be completely sure where some of the other apostles went because the New Testament does not say. But according to very ancient tradition, Andrew went to Greece and Russia. James the Greater, John's brother, served in Spain, but later returned to Jerusalem where he became the first apostle to die as a martyr for the Lord. Philip, priest in Asia Minor, while James the Less became the first bishop of Jerusalem. Bartholomew. Bartholomew went to Armenia and Thomas to India. Matthew served in many communities of Palestine where he wrote his gospel. Thaddeus, also called Jude, went with Simon the Zealot to Iran and its surrounding countries. Matthias, who took the place of Judas the traitor, preached in Ethiopia. John, who was the youngest of them all, took care of Our Lady and eventually died in Turkey. He wrote a gospel, three letters, and the book of Revelations before he died. All of these holy men, except for John, died as martyrs. Their heroic deaths were, were a final way of telling us that life, death, and resurrection of Jesus were true. Okay, so they all died as martyrs except John. Why do you think Jesus chose Peter to be the first pope out of the twelve? He had 12 choices. Why would he choose Peter to be the first pope? What kind of person was Peter? Was he quiet? No. No, he was loud in your face, and he was tough. I mean, he didn't care if people liked him or not, right? Why would that be a quality that... Are you seriously making up people that are <laughs> Why would that be a quality you would need, Max? Yeah. Okay, think about it, you guys. The Romans are mad at the Christians because they didn't like Jesus. The Jews are mad at him because they didn't believe Jesus was special. And so they got all these people against him. He, Jesus knew he would have to have somebody who was really tough and could stand up to all the, um, what's the word I want? All the hardships he was going to face starting a new church. Okay? Now, he didn't. why wouldn't he put John in charge of that? What kind of person was John? Who have I not heard from? Sophia. John was like quiet and kind, so he didn't really like, he wouldn't have spoke his mind like, as Peter would. John was kind of like Cam. Cam's a quiet guy, and when you want something done, you can rely on him, but he's, he, are, he is quiet, okay? Or Caleb. So, he, everybody has their strengths, right? 
and he knew that John, that's why he had John take care of his mom. Okay? He knew that John would do a really good job taking care of Mary. Maybe Peter, not so much. Peter was kind of a blah. He was tough. He didn't care what people thought, but he kind of spouted off at the mouth a little much, right? And anybody you know like that? <laughs> okay, but everybody, it's like Mr. Moyer and I, okay? When we have people that get mad at us, I deal with those people. When people need somebody to listen and be a good, nice, soft-hearted person, they go to Mr. Moyer, okay? So everybody has their strengths, and Jesus knew that. That's why Peter was the first pope, and he had John take care of his mom. All right, I digress. We're going to start up here. Miss Mark Caleb, hit the road. Not yet. Don't move it yet. All right, so I want you to start reading. Sophia, will you start reading this part, please? Yeah. The Roman Catholic Church is the largest group of Christians in the world. There are about one billion members, mostly in Europe, North, and South America. The church goes back to about 30 AD through the life of Jesus Christ and his apostles. Roman Catholics believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God and that he rose to heaven after being crucified. They believe that Jesus brought salvation to all people on earth. What is salvation? You won't put it on What is salvation? Max? Heaven. Getting to heaven. He, Jesus died, conquered death so that we could all go to heaven. Oh. Right there. See, she's so good. That's why I had her do it. Keep going. The leader of the Roman Catholic Church and successor of Jesus Christ on earth is the Pope. He governs the church from the Vatican, a small state situated in the heart of Rome. The Pope selects cardinals and bishops to lead the church throughout the world. The Roman Catholic Church has influenced history more than any other organization. It exercises powers throughout the Middle Ages. Missionaries traveled to other countries to spread Catholicism. Yeah, Catholicism. <laughs> Great architects created churches and cathedrals. Artists drew paintings and made uh, frescoes. Frescoes. Okay, we're gonna stop there. So this paints a very rosy picture of the Catholic Church. If you listen to these people, and I'm not saying it wasn't like that. We did nothing wrong, okay? Now, I am Catholic, I believe 100% in the beliefs, but we also have, because the Catholic Church is made up of humans, there are sins. How many of you know what indulgences are? Have you guys heard of that before? LJ? Isn't it like pay to get better? <laughs> yeah. Say LJ's great grandma died, and he so he would go to the bishop and say, hey, here's $500, can you make sure she gets to heaven? The bishop, of course, pockets the money and says, sure. Like, people seriously believe that. Okay, so we, the church sold indulgences because they liked the money it could earn. Gunner? That's what happened in the 1600s, and that's why um, Martin Luther started from the church to make relationships. Yes, and Martin Luther was right. Martin Luther was a Catholic priest who said, here's some things going wrong with the church. And he didn't want to start his own church. He wanted to talk to the Pope about it and said, here's what you need to change. And he was right. And the Pope said, you're excommunicated. Okay, the Pope didn't at the time did not, and I'm not sure which Pope it was. He said, "No, we're not, we're not doing anything wrong." So Martin Luther started his own church, which started the Protestant Reformation because they protested the Catholic Church. Yes. What's the difference between the Lutheran and the, the Catholic Church now? Now it's they're both Christian churches. So can I write on here? Is that even a word? Yeah, it's, it's Egyptian. Is that even a serious word? Yes. Egyptians use this. Oh my. He and his dumb marker. He puts them up. He likes them up. Okay, so here you have Christianity. How many gods do Christ, does Christianity believe in? One. Amelia. One. Good. So we believe in one God. <laughs> Keep the comments to yourself. Okay, so. There's Catholics, Baptists, and there's more. I'm not going to list them all, but Lutherans, Methodists. All of these people are Christians. They believe in one God, and they believe that Jesus is the Son of God. Okay? So there's Christianity, belief in one God, Jesus is the Son of God. and the Trinity. That, they all believed in that same thing. However, the difference is, is cat, they all started out, before it was just Catholics were the only Christians. Then, like Gunnar said, 
very well spoken. I'm very impressed with you and proud of you, Gunnar. Martin Luther said, hey, there's some things going on that shouldn't be going on. Well, they said, nope, sorry, you're out of here. So he started his own church, and then other people started to do that. Gunnar. And that's why uh, Martin Luther nailed the 90, 90 Theses on the Catholic Church in the door to, to that he thought was different about the church. And what needed to be changed, and he was right. Okay, And there's a whole history, I'm not going to go all Mr. Moyer on you, and explain why um, there was so much corruption in the church, but it was because of the Black Death, the plague, kind of like what we're going through now. But anyway... Christianity, Catholics believe that the bread and wine actually become the body and blood of Jesus. Baptists, Lutherans, Methodists, Episcopalians, they all see it as um, a remembrance of Jesus' sacrifice, not actually Jesus. So that's the main difference. But we all believe in one God. We believe in the Trinity. We believe um, that Jesus was the Son of God. So we have a lot of the same beliefs. And everybody's going to heaven. Okay, everyone's just taking a different path to get there. Right? Like, I'll tell you, well, stake and shake. You can go up Benford, you can go up Allisonville, you can go up Keystone and around. You're still going to the same place. It's just how you get there. Does that make sense? Yeah. I probably shouldn't have brought up stake and shake. You guys are probably hungry because it's almost yeah. lunchtime. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, um, any other questions? You guys don't have any questions about the Pope? They had questions about why women can't be priests and why nuns live in convents and. We're not playing chess. No questions. Uh, Cam. Why do nuns wear like only black? They asked that. Why do they wear, a lot of them wear all black or the black habits? I think it's to show that they're not worried about what's on the outside of them. They're worried about what's on the inside. Okay. They dedicate their lives to prayer and service. So I think that's why. Yes? What's the difference between a sister and a nun? Um, a sister, so like a sister of Providence who started this school, your dad, when he was in my class, we had Sisters of Providence. Sister Jean is a Sister of Providence. They don't have to live in a monastery, like as a community. Sister Heidi and my friend, Sister Nicolette, both are Benedictine nuns, so they have to live together in a community. Like Sister Jean has her own apartment, but she's still a Sister of Providence. So that's the difference. They're still good women who dedicate their lives to prayer and the service of others. They do so much good work with the poor and underprivileged and in hospitals and schools and all that. Yes? Why can't women be like the priests in the church? Good question. Why can't women be priests, do you think? There's a reason. Gabby? Because there were no women apostles? Right. Okay, so Jesus chose all men. But what you need to remember, what, how were women treated back in Jesus' time? How were they treated? Who have I not heard from today? Cooper Teeple. Did they think uh, women should run businesses and have their own jobs? And no. They were um, uh, seen as lower than men. Yeah. Like, they were treated like they were whatever. Right. So because Jesus didn't choose women, the Catholic Church thinks that women shouldn't be ordained. But also, we're, I mean, we're kind of running out of priests, so we got to figure out something. Um, but that's why. But even here in America, a woman until 1970 could not have a credit card in her name. She had to have it in her husband's name. And that was only 50 years. What did you say? <laughs> I cannot comment because I'm on being recorded. But so anyway, it takes a long time to change. So that's why women are not priests. Yes, Gabby. Will women be able to be priests and bishops and all that one day? That I can't predict. I doubt it. But you never know. Elaine. What if you didn't have a husband? Like, what you, you didn't get a credit card. You had to pay cash for everything. I know. How crazy is that? Okay. No homework. Um, we still have about six minutes. So you guys are great. Goodbye. Bye, everybody.